Hey guys, it's Alexandra from ilovenots.com and creationcrochet.com. Today we're going to be making the Dylan Claire Premi Size Baby Beanies. This is an easy crochet pattern worked in simple double crochet stitches. You're going to find three sizes in this video. That's going to be one to one and a half pounds, two to three pounds, and three to five pounds. After that, it's going to be a newborn size, so I'll link in the description box below the video tutorial for the newborn size. You'll find the written pattern for this linked down there as well. Typically, I would work a double crochet beanie two inches smaller than the given head circumference as it will stretch to fit. For preemie sizes it's preferred by many organizations to do it one inch smaller than the given head circumference. So the measurements that I'm providing to you are going to be matching that. These beanies are designed to be one inch smaller than the given head circumferences for these sizes. We're working with worsted weight number four yarn. This is as heavy as you want to go for preemie sizes. You do not want to use bulky yarn or super bulky yarn because preemies get overheated very fast. They're very tiny. So this worsted weight yarn is actually pretty chunky for them. My original pattern is worked using Red Heart Soft, which is a 100% acrylic yarn. This sample I am working with Wee Crochet Swish just out of my stash. It is a 100% superwash merino wool. If you're making these beanies to donate to a specific organization, you're going to want to look at the guidelines first because they all have their own guidelines to follow and many of them say to not use wool yarn as a lot of people have allergies to wool. A lot of them also say don't use Red Heart Super Saver because it's too scratchy. Although I think after you wash and dry it, it softens up really nicely and it's actually a really durable yarn for multiple washing and drying which is one thing that you're going to want to make sure that your yarn is not only soft but can withstand multiple washing and drying. So a 100% acrylic is a great option. Anything with nylon or polyamide is a really nice soft and durable option. Cotton blends, which mean that it is cotton mixed with something else like acrylic, those are also really nice. I do not recommend 100% cotton as there is no fiber within it to help it keep its shape or bounce back to shape. So it's just going to stretch out and continue to grow and it's not going to work for very long. Together with this worsted weight yarn, you're going to want to have an I9 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. This is my favorite crochet hook that I got from Sienna's Boutique on Etsy. I'll link it in the description box below for you. Gauge is essential for this project, so you're going to want to have a soft tape measure. I will provide gauge instructions once we finish increasing to the correct diameter size for each size, and you'll want to make sure that you check gauge at that point. If you do not check gauge and your diameter is not measuring the correct measurement, then the finished beanie is not going to fit. It's either going to be too big or too small. So you'll work the sample with me and then stop and check your gauge. If your gauge is too small, you're going to need to go up a crochet hook size, and if your gauge is too large, then you're going to want to go down a crochet hook size. Rework the first couple rounds and check gauge again. As you work, you'll want to measure from the top down to make sure that the beanie is the correct length. I'll provide the links for you as well. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with a slip knot, so I've pulled the working yarn over my fingers here. Wrap it around my index finger two times. Hold the tension with my thumb and my middle finger. Pull the loop on the left up over the other one but not off my finger. Pull the loop on the left up over the other one and off my finger. Then I'll grab my hook, insert it into the loop on my finger and pull it off. Hold the working yarn in my right hand and the short tail end in my left. I'm going to pull that so this knot goes to normal tension. We're going to start differently depending on the size that we're working. They're all going to start with a beginning chain, so I'm going to go ahead and show you that first. We're going to yarn over and pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. Right now we have three chains. Each one of these V-shapes here is a chain. 
If you're working the two to three pound size, we're gonna be working our stitches for this first round into this bottom chain, the very first one that we worked. So I'm gonna show that first. Then I'll take this out and show the other two sizes. If you wanna jump forward to see those, just pop down into the description box below. Scroll down to the timestamp and click on it. It'll jump you forward in the video. So for the two to three pound size, we're gonna have nine double crochets in this first chain. We're not gonna count any of the chains on our hook as a stitch. To double crochet, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook right into the center of that chain, yarn over and pull through. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, insert your hook back into that same chain. Yarn over and pull through. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, insert your hook into that same chain. Yarn over and pull through. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Each one of these that we've worked is a double crochet. And to count them, you go to these V-shapes here along the side, that is the top of the stitch. One, two, three double crochets worked. We're going to continue working so we have nine in total. And as you work, this hole is going to open up because this slip knot is not secured. If at any point while you work you feel like this is going to pull out, you can hold on to the fabric and just give that tail a tug and it will close that hole back up. There's nine double crochets. I'm gonna hold on to that slip knot there in between my fingers and give that tail end a tug. I want a slip stitch join to the very first double crochet of the round. And if you're not sure where that is, the easiest way to find it is to count backwards from where you just finished. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Insert your hook under both loops of that stitch. Yarn over, pull through that stitch and the loop that's on your hook. That's gonna be a slip stitch join and we're gonna do that at the end of each round. Round one for the two to three pound size is complete. In that center hole, we can hold the fabric and give that beginning tail end a tug and it will sort of close it up, but we're gonna actually completely close it and secure it closed once we weave in our ends in a bit. I'm gonna take this out so I can do the other two sizes and then we'll move on to round two. You can jump forward in the video by going down into the description box, find the timestamp, click on the one for the next round and it will jump you forward in the video. For the one to one and a half pound and the three to five pound, I'm back here to the three chains we made in the beginning. We're actually going to do five chains in total, so I'm gonna go ahead and add two more. Then I'm going to insert my hook into that very first chain down at the bottom, right into the center of it, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and through the loop that's on my hook, that's gonna be a slip stitch to form a ring. You see that center hole there? That's where we're gonna be working our stitches for this first round. There is a hole there at the top where you just slip stitch to. That is because the slip knot is not secured. We're not gonna be working into that stitch at the top, just that one in the center. So we're gonna start here with a chain two. This is not going to count as a stitch. As we work, we're going to hold that tail end to the back side of the chains, so when we crochet, we crochet over both together. We're going to have 11 double crochets in total for this round. To double crochet, we yarn over, insert our hook right into the center ring there. When you do that, you have the chains on your hook and that tail end held to the back of the chains. 
then yarn over, pull through, you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, insert your hook into that center ring with the chain and the tail end on your hook, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, insert your hook into the center ring with the chains and the tail end on your hook, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. This gives us three double crochets. We look to these V shapes here at the top. Each one of those is the double crochets that we worked. One, two, three. We're gonna continue working so that we have a total of 11 double crochets in here. And we just wanna make sure as we work, we have the chains and that tail end held to the back for all the stitches that we have here in this first row. There's my 11 stitches. We're going to slip stitch join to the very first double crochet of the round. If you're not sure where that is, the easiest way is gonna to be to count backwards from where you just finished. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Insert my hook under both loops of that first stitch. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and through the loop that's on my hook. That completes round one. This hole here in the middle, give that tail end a tug, and it'll close that hole up. It might still show a little bit there in the center. We're actually going to close it completely and secure it once we weave in our ends. So why do we work the first round differently depending on the size? I have found that as I'm working for nine stitches or less, it tends to create a bowl shape here if I work it in a ring. And then the whole hat pattern kind of takes on that bowl shape instead of laying flat as I work the increases. So when I'm doing nine stitches or less, I always work a beginning chain and then I work directly into the chain. 10 stitches or more look great and are nice and even if you're working into a ring. So I crochet a chain, slip stitch and join to form a ring and then work the first round into that ring when it's 10 stitches or more. That is the method to my madness. Let's jump into round two. Here in the beginning of the beanie, we're going to be increasing. That means we're going to be working extra stitches into the same stitch so that we can increase our total number for the round which is going to allow us to increase the size of our circle, but it will continue to lay flat. We're gonna work up until we get to the size that we need to fit the head size, and then we'll stop increasing. So for round two, we're gonna start with a chain two. I'm gonna be showing you a technique that I use to keep my seam straight. You can use whatever increase method you prefer as long as you end up with the same number of stitches at the end of the rounds. I do not count the chain to here as a stitch when I'm increasing. Typically when we increase, we work two stitches into the first stitch, two stitches into the next, or two stitches into the first stitch, one stitch into the next. I like to split my beginning increase and I work first one stitch into this very first stitch just to the left of the beginning chain. I work all the way around in pattern as normal and then once I finish my last set of increases or my last stitch from the last repeat, I work one stitch into the next stitch which is the same as the first. It's attached to my beginning chain but it's on the right side of the beginning chain. This stitch here on the right together with that stitch on the left is going to complete my first set of increases with two stitches. And by splitting that increase, it's gonna help keep our seam straight the entire time. So let me get my hook back in here. For round two, we're going to increase. So we have two times 
the number of stitches we just finished in round one. We're going to start by working one double crochet into this first stitch, so yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch that the chain is coming out of, picking up both loops of that stitch, and then complete your double crochet. I'll work the second half of this increase once I make it all the way back around. Our repeat here is going to be two double crochets into each stitch all the way around. So this very next stitch, I'm going to work a double crochet. And then I need to work one more in the same stitch, yarn over, insert right back into that same exact stitch, and complete a double crochet. And now you can see we have two double crochets there worked into the same stitch. Continue working two double crochets into each stitch all the way around until you're back to the beginning. And then we're going to work one more stitch at the end to complete that first set of increases. And when we do that, round two is going to end with two times the number of stitches we had in round one. So if you're working the one pound to one and a half pound or the three to five pound, you're gonna finish this round with 22 double crochets. And if you're working the two to three pound size, you're going to finish this round with 18 double crochets. There's my last set of repeats there. I'm going to go ahead and work one more double crochet into that very last stitch, which is the same as the first one. It's attached to that beginning chain. It's just to the right of it where we're going to be working. And that completes the first set of increases there. Now we're going to slip stitch join to the very first stitch of the round. Insert your hook underneath both loops of that first stitch. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and through the loop that's on your hook. That completes round two. If you're working the one to one and a half pound size, this is where you're going to stop increasing. You're going to set this down on your table. You're going to grab your soft tape measure, and you're going to measure from the edge of the left side, directly across the center, to the edge of the right side. You're going to want this diameter to measure two and a half inches. If you're measuring larger than this, you're going to go down a crochet hook size and rework these two rounds. And if you're measuring smaller than this, you're going to go up a crochet hook size and rework these two rounds. If you're not measuring this and you continue, the finished beanie is not going to fit correctly. It's either going to be too big or too small. So it's really important to take your gauge. If you're working the three to five pound size, this is a great time to stop and measure your gauge as well. Once we increase up one more round, I'll go ahead and give you the diameter for that size. But if you're not measuring correctly now, you're not going to measure correctly then. I'm gonna go ahead and continue increasing to show the other sizes. If you wanna jump forward in the video to the next round, go ahead and pop down into the description box, click on the timestamp for the next round, and it'll jump you forward in the video. For round three, we're going to chain two. We're going to start with a double crochet in this very first stitch, just here to the left of the beginning chain. And I'll work the last double crochet that belongs to that increase once I make it all the way back around. Then we'll work one double crochet into the very next stitch. And now we begin the repeat for this round. Two double crochets into the next stitch. One double crochet into the next stitch. Two double crochets into the next stitch. One double crochet into the next stitch. Continue working in this repeat all the way around, two stitches into the next stitch, then one stitch into the next, 
Once you finish at the end of this round, you'll have one double crochet worked over here to complete this last set of increases. We'll work one more double crochet into that very first stitch to complete that first set and then we'll slip stitch join. And at the end of this round, you're going to have three times the number of stitches that you started round one with. So for the two to three pound size, you're going to have 27 stitches. And for the three to five pound size, you're going to have 33 stitches. I've worked all the way around. I finished my last set of the repeat here. I have one more double crochet to work into this next stitch, which is the same as the first and connected to my chain two. This double crochet is gonna come out to the right of that beginning chain. That completes the first set of increases and now we slip stitch join to the very first stitch of the round. And this completes round three. This is where we're gonna stop increasing for both the two to three pound size and the three to five pound size. You're going to lay this down on your table, grab your soft tape measure, measure from the edge of the left side directly across the center to the edge of the right side. For the two to three pound size, you're gonna want your diameter to measure three and a quarter inches. And for the three to five pound size, you're gonna want your diameter to measure three and a half inches. If you're measuring smaller than this, you'll go up a crochet hook size and rework this. If you're measuring larger than this, you'll wanna go down a crochet hook size and rework this, then measure again. If you're currently not measuring the diameter sizes that I provided and you continue, the finished beanie is not going to fit correctly. It's either gonna to be too big or too small. So it's really important to take the gauge here. Let's go ahead and continue. Now that we have all of our increases done for the crown, we're gonna start working the body. And the body's just gonna be one stitch all the way around. I'm gonna to continue to show you how I alternate my stitches here so that I continue to keep a straight seam. I hate traveling seams, so I work in this alternate method so my seam stays straight the whole entire time. If you prefer to work in a different method, go ahead and do it. Start with a chain two. From here on out, this chain two is going to count as one of our double crochets, the very first double crochet. So we are not going to work our first double crochet into this first stitch. Instead, we're gonna work our first double crochet into this next stitch to the left. And we're gonna continue working one double crochet into each stitch all the way around. Once you get to the end, you're gonna have the same number of stitches in this round that you just finished the last round of increases with. Here at the end, I have worked my last stitch there and you can see I'm not adding an extra stitch here into this first stitch because I have 33 stitches, including this beginning chain. And my hat is already taking this bowl shape. That's exactly what we want since we're not increasing anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch join. I still like to do it to the first double crochet, not the beginning chain. And that is going to be the first round after increasing. We'll go ahead and flip this to the right side facing, which is the front. Then for the next one, we're going to start with that beginning chain two. Still count this as its first double crochet, but now I'm gonna work my first stitch into that very first stitch that the chain is coming out of. Then I'm gonna to continue to work one double crochet into each stitch all the way around until I get back to the beginning. And you're gonna have the same number of stitches in this round. I've made it all the way around here. That's my last stitch. Nothing in that very last one, which is connected to the chain two. Slip stitch join to the first double crochet of the round. Now we're going to go back to that first way I showed you. We're alternating these starting instructions so that it kind of creates a stagger against the beginning chain. Down here in this first round that we worked, you worked the first double crochet into the second stitch, which put the last stitch a little bit closer to the beginning chain on the right side. 
Then we worked the double crochet into the first stitch in this round, which puts it a little bit closer to that beginning chain, and they kind of stagger on each side of that chain. That's my trick to keeping the seam straight the entire time. So for this next round, we're going to begin it the same way with a chain two, always with a chain two here while we're working double crochet. And the first double crochet is not going to go into this first stitch, but it's going to go into the second stitch. Then continue double crocheting into each stitch all the way around. You'll continue to have the same number of stitches throughout the rest of the beading. Here at the end of this round, I've worked my last stitch into the same stitch as that beginning chain to get the correct number of stitches. And this is normal, this is how it's going to continue to be. Anytime you're working from the second stitch on, since it had to bridge the gap in stitches down here from not counting the beginning chain to counting it. So finishing here in the same stitch that the beginning chain is coming out of, perfectly normal. For the one to one and a half pound size, this is the last round that we have. So we're gonna go ahead and slip stitch join to the top chain of the beginning chain two. First chain on the bottom, second chain on the top, insert right into the center of that chain yarn over, pull through that stitch, and the loop that's on your hook. For all the other sizes, you're gonna go ahead and slip stitch to that first double crochet there. I'm gonna pull up a loop just for a moment here. You're gonna to wanna to measure the length. For this little beanie, we have six rounds. That's one here at the top that we started, two, three, four, five, and six. Lay it down on your surface, take your soft tape measure, measure from the top center all the way down the center there to the bottom edge and you're going to want this one to one and a half pound size beanie to measure three inches tall. If it's not measuring three inches tall and you need just a tiny bit more, about a quarter inch or so, you can go ahead and add a round of single crochet. If you need more than that, you can try half double crochet or another round of double crochet. Once your length is correct, then you'll fasten off here with a tail end long enough you can comfortably weave in. Pull up on that loop to break it and then get ready to weave in your ends. I'm not ready to do that yet. I'm going to go ahead and keep working. I want to show one more round for the other sizes. So I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch here to the second stitch, which is the first double crochet. Now the previous round, we started with our first double crochet into the second stitch. For this one, we're going to start with a chain two and then a double crochet into the very first stitch, the one the chain is coming out of. Then continue to double crochet into each stitch all the way around. And this is how the pattern is going to go as you continue on. You're going to alternate by starting in the second stitch and the first stitch. Second stitch, first stitch. This next round is going to be round seven. For the two to three pound size, you're going to want to have seven rounds in total, counting from that top. One, two, three, four, five, six, and an extra one will be seven. That's going to measure three and a half inches in length. And for the three to five pound size, you're going to want to have nine rounds complete. That's going to be about four and three quarter inches tall. Again, once you get to the end there, if you need about another quarter of an inch, you can do a round of single crochet. If you need more than that, you'll want to do either half double crochet or another round of double crochet. Once you get there, go ahead and fasten off with the tail end long enough to comfortably weave in. Pull up on that loop to break it and then grab your tapestry needle so you can weave in your ends. I'm going to be showing you how to weave in the ends using the video tutorial from my Octavia beanie. While the stitch pattern may look different, the techniques are gonna be worked exactly the same. Go ahead and turn your beanie to the wrong side facing the inside. 
we'll go ahead and do the top center circle. Thread that into your tapestry needle. I like to stick my hand into the beanie so that I can grab it a little bit better and manipulate it as I need. For this top center hole, we're going to go all the way around clockwise back to where our tail end is currently coming out of. Once we get here, we're going to push through a couple more stitches. So I'm just going to insert under a couple at a time. This brings me back to the beginning. I'm going to push through a couple more stitches here. And when I exit, I'm going to break my stitch in half. And I'll explain that in a few moments, but I'm going to go ahead and pull through. I'm going to hold on to the fabric in between my fingers and I'm going to give that a tug to close up that hole. Don't pull too tight because you can tear your yarn. You just want to close it up. Then I'll hold the tension with my thumb here on the left. And now I'm going to come counterclockwise through several stitches. And as I mentioned before, when I insert and exit my stitches, I don't pick up the whole stitch on my needle like this. Instead, I insert it into the center of that stitch, breaking it in half, which is going to help capture my yarn better. I do that when I enter and when I exit. So I'm inserting into a nearby stitch here, running vertically through several of those same stitches I just finished working in, and I'm going to break my last stitch in half when I exit. And I'm going to push through, pull it, give it a tug. If it has bunched up, I'm going to use my fingers to manipulate the fabric. I want it to lay naturally. That's two passes. I like to do three passes, so I'm going to go ahead, I don't know if you can hear my cat crinkling. I'm going to go ahead and insert into a nearby stitch here, run it back through several of the same stitches I just worked, and break my last stitch in half. That's going to be my third pass. That's my magic number. If you feel secure after two, you can fasten off. If you need a fourth one, go ahead and work it. It's whatever you feel the most secure with your end. As you saw, I pulled it through, I gave it a tug. If I need to manipulate the fabric, now I'm good to go. I'm gonna fasten this off. I'm gonna thread that last tail end. It's already on the wrong side. If yours is not, go ahead and bring it to the wrong side. I'm going to rotate it so I can work vertically here. I still have my hand in the opening. I'm going to insert into a nearby stitch here, breaking it in half, and I'm going to run vertically through several stitches. The reason why I'm not working horizontally is because we don't want to prohibit any of the stretch. This beanie needs to stretch widthwise so it will fit our head. So we want to weave in our ends vertically into the stitches. Hold the fabric in between my fingers, pull the needle through, give it a tug, and then come back and manipulate the fabric if it has bunched up. Rotate it, insert into a nearby stitch, breaking it in half, run back vertically through several of those same stitches, breaking the last one in half. Before I pull it through, I have some pliers here. I like to have pliers handy when I'm weaving in ends in case it's tough on my fingers to pull through. Use the flat ends to grab your needle and help you pull it through. This one is really easy to work into, but I didn't know if it was going to be tough. Give it a tug, manipulate the fabric. One more pass for me, rotate my fabric and work a third pass. And 
And now I'm ready to fasten that off as well. I'm going to go ahead and bring this back to the right side facing. And now your beanie is ready to wear. Guys, thanks so much for watching my video. You'll find the written pattern for this linked in the description box below. Let me know what organization you're going to be donating your preemie beanies to. I always love to add new places to my list. Please smash that like button and hit subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.